Hello everybody. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new on this channel, welcome. If you're not new, you're still welcome. <laughs> so in this um, video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a shift dress. Something nice and simple that you can make for sale, you know, with pocket, facing, turn up, everything that makes the dress well. And I'm also going to show you how to finish the dress properly. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is the measurements that we need for this dress. So the dress is a kimono sleeve dress. So these are the measurements I'm going to be using. I'll be using my nape to sleeve, my bust, my waist, my hip, and then the length of the dress. So now for this measurements like the bust, waist, and hip, you need to add plus 2.5. You need to add 2.5 inches to your original measurement before dividing by 4. So that way, your dress is not too bogus, it's not too big, and it is not too tight. It's just perfect. It's like you don't even need a zip. It will pass through perfectly. So yeah, add 2.5 to your measurement and then do your division. And you have that. So I also wrote out the pieces I'm going to be cutting. I'm going to be cutting the front piece of the dress, the back, my facing front and back, my pocket, and my turn up. So let's do this. So I already have my divisions, of course, as you can see, and I'm just going to go straight into the marking, marking, marking everywhere. Now, the first thing we're going to do is fold our fabric using the nape to sleeve measurement. So your nape to sleeve is from the middle of your neck to wherever you want it to stop on your sleeve. So mine is 16. I'm going to be folding my fabric using that measurement. I'll be adding 0 0.5 because of the turn up I'm adding. So this is 16.5. So I'll do this. So now I have the measurement I need and then from here I can start doing all my divisions. Now my um, sleeve measurements, you know we need to leave an opening here for your sleeve. I normally like to use my actual sleeve, which is um, 15, so that's when it's even loose. So I use that divided by 2, 7.5 from here to here, so I'm going to mark that first. If you want yours to be like loose, you can add more to it, but I just like mine looking fitted because it just looks smarter to me. So I'm going to mark 7.5 from here. This other part, I'm going to sew it in. So 7.5 plus one inch for sewing. So this one inch is for, 0 0.5 is for the top sewing, 0 0.5 is for sewing this part. So I'm marking 8.5 in total. Let me get my ruler. So this is my sleeve. This is where my hand is going to come out of. Now the next thing we are going to do is mark your bust measurement on this line. So my bust measurement after I've added 2.5 and divided by 4 is 11.3. So I am adding 11.3 on this line. And then I'm also putting 0 0.75 sewing allowance. I don't want to use 0 0.5 because it's small. I don't want to use one inch. It's too much. So 0 0.75 works for me. Then we're going to put our waist and our hip measurement and then the length measurement. So our waist measurement, your half length measurement, mine is 17. If I was making something really fitted, I would use um, 16.5. But I'll be using 17 here. 17. And then my hip measurement from my waist to my hip is 9. So my hip is 43. So if yours is um, smaller, you can use 8. If it's bigger, you can use 9, 9.5. And then the length of my dress is 38. I'll mark 38 here. Then I'll mark 1 inch and then 0 0.5. So by the time I'm done with this dress, this half an inch is for folding the bottom of the dress. And then the 0 0.5 is for sewing the shoulder. So by the time I'm done, my dress will be 38 inches long. So I'm going to mark that 38 inches plus the 0 0.5, I'll be sorry, plus the 1.5 over here. And join it like this. Then this mark, I'm drawing the mark out so that you will see it's clear. So this is my waist. 
this is my hip so that you can see and then this is my bust and then the length of my dress okay so now i'm going to increase my waist measurements my hip measurements and then i'm just going to transfer my hip measurements to the hem so my waist measurement is 9.3 after all my addition and then division is 9.3 I'm adding the 0 0.75 sewing allowance and then my hip measurement is 11.1 .1. and then I'm also adding the 0 0.75 sewing allowance I am going to whatever I measured on my hip I'm just going to take it down here so that is 11.1 .1 and then 0 0.75 sewing allowance that's what it's going to be for down here. So now, if you see my waist area, if I'm going to join this line to this line, it is going to be looking like this and like this. It will be looking like this. So now there's two things. Number one, I know that I am not shaped like this. I know that I am not shaped like this. So I'm just having this because I took my, all of the measurements, I took them fitted and I don't want it um, fitted at all. So I'm going to be adding 1.5 around my, around my waist or even one around my waist just so that it comes out a bit. I don't want this place to have to move inside. I just want it to be like a box dress, like a straight dress. So yeah, I'll be adding one inch to my waist measurement. I'll add one inch over there. So, you know, there are some um, shift dresses that you can put zip. So, if you have like really tiny waist and, and your hip is like big, if you are looking like this, <laughs> if you are looking like this, then you know that you need to put your zip. Even if this dress is free, you need to put your zip because your waist measurement, if your waist is let's say 28 and your bust is let's say 40, your waist measurement, even if you've added this 2.5 we added here, is not going to pass your bust. So you're going to need a zip. But then if you want it to be like a box dress, a straight dress, then add 1 or 1.5 inch to your waist measurement and then draw your lines. So now I'll be using my new waist mark is this one inch I just added here. So let me join my hip to the hem. And then I'll join this my hip to the waist and then i'll join my bust to my waist so you can see that what i have is more like it's almost a straight line it's just there okay so let's look at our neckline because right now we already have the dress so let's just look at our neckline the first neckline i'll be drawing is the back and i'm doing the back first because the front i want to put like a slit in front so i'll do the back first so i'm um, using 3.5 for my neckline i don't want it to be too wide which is why i'm using 3.5 and then for the depth i'll be using 1.5 so by the time we are done sewing you're going to have one inch left so i'm using 1.5 here so this is 3.5 and this is 1.5 i'll get my curve to Make a nice curve over here. So that is my back neckline. So now I'm going to cut out what I have just marked. So when you come um, to this area, this side, where we have the bust, like a sharp point. So I don't always like to make it that sharp. I like to make a curve over here. So it looks more like this. It looks like a curve instead of just a sharp edge. So now I'm going to keep cutting. Good. So this is what our back piece looks like. I haven't cut the neck yet because I want to place this on the front and then, you know, mark this piece before I cut that out. So I'm going to go ahead now and cut my front piece. The front piece is the same with the back. So when I'm working with a fabric that doesn't have um, boundaries or borders, 
So borders is, let's say for instance, the design of the fabric is just all over here and then it has like some design at this part of it that you need to mind. For instance, if you were cutting flare, you wouldn't want to interfere with that design coming this way. Yeah. So if I was working with a fabric that has that border, I would place my fabric just the way I placed it, you know, just so that I can get the patterns on the fabric right. But I'm working with a fabric that doesn't have any pattern restrictions whatsoever. So to manage my fabric, I am going to be turning this like this and cutting. Okay, so I have my back piece and I have my front piece here together. So I'm going to turn this like this just so that I can mark this. If you notice, I didn't put any shoulder slants, you know, nothing like that because it's a kimono sleeve and we're not doing any gengen design details. So yeah. So I'm going to cut out my back neckline now. So this is the back. And then what I have here is my front. So for my front, my neckline would be, let's say, I would also make it four inches. It will be four inches deep. The depth will be four inches. And here would also remain, this point will remain 3.5. So I'm going to draw a curve from here to that line I just drew like this so I just made a curve oh my curve went outside I just made a curve so now you're going to decide how this slit that we're putting at the neckline you decide how you want that to be do you want it to be really deep do you want it to be you know just moderate and all of that so you can decide what you want so I'm just going to be putting four inches slits just four so I'm going to open here by four inches. So let me cut this part out. Good, so this is my front. I'm just going to pin it down so that it doesn't dance when I'm cutting my face. In. So now the next thing we're going to cut is the facing for the neckline for the front and the back because we need that before we even start sewing at all at all. So for my back facing, this can work, this really small place can work. So I'm going to place this like this. My back facing is usually I like to use 2.5 because it's just very moderate. It's not big, it's not cumbersome. So I'm going to mark here and see, okay, I have enough. I have enough. So I'll pin them together because it has to give you the exact neckline. And then I'll cut that out. So now I'm turning it to the back. This is the back. And then it's when you turn to the back that you mark the 2.5 that I was talking about. Like this. So this is 2.5. So I'm going to mark, sorry, rather, I'm going to cut this piece like this, 2.5. So this is my facing for the back, both of them. So now I'm going to place two of them together and just notch because I want to, I don't want to be confused by any part of it, the midpoint. So I have notched both of them. If you open it up, you can see that I have a notch here. So that's for the back. Let's cut for the front. 
more space. So I'm just going to place this one here like this. And then place my front piece on it to be sure that I have what I need, which is the 2.5. The width of the facing should be 2.5. And then our facing is going to come for the front, our facing is going to come like this and like this. So it's not going to be like this for just the back, it will come this way and then this way. So, um, you know, we have this four inch mark that we placed here. I'm just going to measure three inches below that four inch, and then that would give me the length of the facing I'm even looking for. So that's about 11.5. So, if I place this here, I know that I have what I'm looking for. So, I will place this right here. And then I'll pin it. I'll pin here. Good, so now I can cut the shape. So this is what we have. So like the back, like what we did for the back, we'll turn this over like this. And then mark our 2.5. So I'm going to mark here like this. Can you see what I just did? So I'm following the shape. So from here to here, I'm going to mark the 2.5. There, there has to be a meeting between this curve coming this way and then this straight line going this way. So I'll check for my mark somewhere here. And then I'll mark that 2.5. So this is the shape of our facing for the front. So now I can cut. So this is our front facing. This piece on top is our front facing and this is the back. So if you want your facing to have like a little curve here, you know, something nice. You don't want to have this really sharp Okay guys, sorry, um, someone called and it cut my video short. So I was saying that if you want your facing to have this nice little curve here, instead of just the sharp square edge, you can do something nice to just give it a curve. So yeah, the next thing we are um, cutting is pockets and turn up. So I like cutting my turn up when I'm done with the sewing, but you know, I can just cut it now for the purpose of this video so that you will see how I'm doing it and then our pockets. I already have a video somewhere showing you how to cut pockets. The sleeve of the dress. What side do I use? Let me use this for to cut one side. So the sleeve of the dress is the opening I made. Remember I told you that I wanted my, my round sleeve to be 15 and then I divided it by 2 and I have 7.5. So what I'm cutting here today now is 7.5. I'm going to measure what I have here. I like my turn up to be about two inches. So I have six inches here, which is like a lot. It is, it's enough for what I want to do. So I'm going to measure that 7.5 and add one inch. So that's 8.5. So this is it. So remember I said when I divide the 15, by two. That's what I have. So when you're cutting your tunnel, because better you have excess than for you to have too little because too little means you need to cut fabric again and add. But excess means you just need to trim off what you already have. So I'm checking my 2.5 like this. So I want my tunnel. So if you can see here, I have, I'm wearing a dress that has tunnel. Yeah. So this is two inches. So I'm just going to measure that two inches add 0 0.5 sewing allowance like this 
and then turn this like this because it has to be like this so now I'm just going to cut off the excess So this is my turn up, like this. When I'm sewing it, I'm going to open it up like this, sew it to the dress, and then it will come like this, just like what I have on right now, if you can see. So I'm just going to cut another one of these for the other sleeve, and then we head to the sewing machine. Okay, so now we have our pocket, we have the turn up, and then we have our dress with the facing. So we're ready to go to the sewing machine. We are ready. Let's do this. <laughs> 